Where is Kiribati? Well, here we are, 33 tiny islands in the very center of the vast Pacific. And please, despite the strange spelling, we are called Kiribati. <laughs> to experience the true spirit of Kiribati, We'll go to one of our remote outer islands. Every Ikiripas can trace their roots back to a home island and village. To an outsider, village life may seem to be very quiet, but it's certainly never dull. There's always something happening. In our culture, all important events begin with the presentation of garlands to respected guests. <laughs> the intense excitement of preparation is released and it's time to move on. Maniaba is really the, the symbol of village life. It's the centre of village life. In uh, olden times, it was a law court. It was a place where people met. It was a place where everybody identified themselves, you know, through their family and that kind of thing. The whole building is redolent of symbolism. The way that every stick is put together, the way that each knot is tied, has some kind of a connection with traditional culture. <laughs> Old men, you know, from each family become the representatives of those families in the Maniaba. They have meetings and make decisions on matters which affect the whole village. It's a remarkably resilient institution that's survived many other changes in, in the society, but it's still the, it's the focus of village life. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Chants like this are as old as Kiribati itself. In this way, the lessons of history and genealogy are passed down. Every Maniaba is a rich storehouse of unique stories. This place was once the home of a great warrior ancestor. Kourabi. His bones were kept in a casket in the ceiling. One night, Kourabi appeared in a dream to a modern-day descendant and asked to be shifted to a smaller maniaba because he felt unsafe. A few days after he was shifted, a big storm wrecked his former home. Dreams and the use of magic are still very important in many aspects of our lives. Sometimes the maneuver is just a place for fun. The words to this song have no meaning at all. They're just good, light-hearted nonsense. The pandanus tree has always been a rich source of useful materials. Every part is used, from the roots to the very tip. But it's the delicious fruit we're going to look at now. These village women have picked the pandanus fruit and are at the first stage of making tetsuwe. This is a very popular preserved pandanus delicacy. This stage involves softening up the fruit in preparation for its overnight steaming. This is a traditional omom or red oven. These coral stones are excellent for holding the heat. These special leaves stop the steam from escaping. This steaming process will take all night. Next morning, the oven has cooled down and it's time to lift the fruit. The softened fruit is kept wet, then scraped to remove the pulp. Yeah, 
This old lady is well into her 80s, but she still keeps a close eye on her young helpers. She knows there are no shortcuts to this process. The pulp is steamed once more and any stringy fibers are removed. The pulp is then laid on a bed of leaves and left in the sun to dry. Two days later, one side is dried and it's turned over. While the dried pandanus is peeled into flakes, the final ingredient is prepared, coconut milk. The flesh is scraped and then squeezed for its rich juice. And after four or five days patient work, the cooks gather to give their verdict. <laughs> and it's delicious. All our islands are coral atolls, which have been built up over a span of 30 million years. An atoll is formed when an island sinks beneath the sea, leaving a ring of coral. Wonderful gear. These islands are basically made of coral. They are coral atolls. If you walk on the islands or look at any of the rock on all of the islands, it's all pieces of coral. Coral does not create fertile soil, so this huge ocean becomes our farm and garden. Our ancestors were great sea navigators, and the design of these canoes is centuries old. Ideally, the outrigger should be clear of the water so the boat moves faster. On the other hand, there's always the danger of being tipped right over. But this is a calm day. To bring a bit of spice to the competition, the spirits can sometimes add a touch of wind and rough seas. The launch of a new vessel is a big event, and it's all hands to the pump. I'm 
56% of our people still live on our island lifestyle, but even these communities need income for their basic needs. So, we decided to look into seaweed farming. Our story begins with a man who wants to grow money in his garden. Money? I can't grow money. I see. So you want to learn how to grow money, do you? Yes, please. Right. Let's go to Putaritari. I see Gararere na the way Dangiragiro Putaritari are in Ayamedinano. In Putaritari, we learned all about seaweed farming and how to grow money. <laughs> Once again, for the next three or four days, Mother Nature does her work. That's 30 kilos. Now let's weigh the rest. And now I'll count out your money. And so after lots of hard work, the taste of victory is very sweet. And it's only a start. So it's true, I can grow my own money? Yes, of course. Right, I'm off. Hey, where are you going? What do you think? I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be a millionaire. <laughs> Yes, we know the ocean can be a friend and a source of wealth, but there are also times when she shows a very different face. When you watch this, please remember that many of our islands are only two meters above the high tide mark. Te pai to wana ai apon sandang in rosi meaura pon te buaka nte kakarau metiang. Ntaya ken ke keidik. Asa taya ba yaina makaina ne kakarau, ayaina pena makaina ndrai. Nkai, kwagi konani ko au anane, ba ya pitaki. Ya ryo te bubwa kadik. O meni bubura na ba ana urubai. Te ya bubu smetena. Punjara ayah kakak ni kami bintangkan kanuan pon. Jera cepai.